The first Olympic Games were held in Greece back in 1896. The Games have come a very long way since then, and nowadays modern technology is changing the way we watch and learn about the Olympics. Artificial intelligence is working to improve the Games, revolutionizing them now and in the years to come. And for more insight, we're joined by CEO of Rebrand X, Hodge Flemings. Thanks a lot, Hodge, for coming in here this morning. So we're seeing a lot of Summer Olympics. I've been watching a lot. I know you've been watching a lot. Mm -hmm. How is AI being utilized in these Summer Olympics right now? So I call this like the AI games, right? And so, and so let's take a look at Noel Lyles. So that was one of the closest finishes in the 100 meter men's race, right? It was decided by 0 .005 seconds. Incredible. But if you looked at the time um, at both times of him um, and Sean Thompson, it was 9.79. So the photo finish, it looks like the Jamaican runner finishes first because his foot crosses the line, but it's based on the torso. But the camera that's actually recording it or actually um, actually analyzing it can capture 40,000 frames per second. Amazing. Right? And so, and so what happens is that it's not, it's not watching the race. It's recording and breaking down these moments. And so what ends up happening is that now it takes AI um, and it's looking at models that are designed for each specific sport. So racing, diving, gymnastics is taking this information and it's able to analyze body movement in four dimensions. And so you're then able to break down, watch the race and analyze and is able to eliminate human error in deciding who wins. So now technology is dictating silver, gold and human legacy. Well, I'm glad we had AI for that race. It was <laughs> incredibly close. Now, there's one thing in a race because, you know, there's a winner. It's definite. But what about in sports like gymnastics or swimming where there's judges involved? Is AI helping in that at all? So it is being in, um, integrated into gymnastics, but let's talk about that. So let's go back and look at Jordan Giles, right? And so in the floor exercise, um, she was in fifth place that her, her actual coach went and challenged and appealed and they got point, I think like a tenth of a point back. That part was a human, that was a manual entry. Mm. But now how do you eliminate the human aspect of the Romanian, um, um, gymnast who saw the score and thought she won. So that if that was analyzed by AI, then you would have eliminated that aspect of that error. But then the human part of the engagement and being able to analyze the artistry from a human standpoint, that's going to be augmented. And I think we're going to be rewriting how we look at sports, especially when it's based on microseconds and movement. Yeah, I mean, there could be major changes coming ahead. Now, yeah. what about for fans? How is AI being used to create, like, custom sports highlight packages? So, yeah, so um, so everybody has heard of um, Al Michaels, right? Yeah. Um, he's an iconic sports broadcaster. And so, and so this is kind of a landmark type of experience, especially in the entertainment space. Hollywood had their writer's strike based on its very premise. Right. So now they're taking out Michaels, they're cloning his voice so that he can create a consistent recap every single day. So now it's an audio recap. So how does how does how does a fan feel about that if it sounds the same and is based on his voice? Mm. Right. And so so now we're setting a precedent. If this is something that's acceptable by the public, what does this do for our cultural icons? So do we bring back Howard Cosell? <laughs> You know, do we now make these voices timeless and it could really change the way we experience games and sports? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure Uncle Al is getting some monetary <laughs> uh, dollars for this. But if you bring back somebody like Howard Cosell, I mean, uh, there would be no money involved unless you have to pay, you know, his uh, immediate but it'll be family interesting. or something, right? Yeah, but it'll be interesting to see how, I'm, so I don't know how much Al Michaels got paid to do this. I'm sure he got something, but now if you get market value, what does that look like versus him having to come into the studio every day and record, right? Yeah, so that's true. Yeah. All right. Like, uh, I want to look into your crystal ball here. This might be hard for you to answer. AI's come so far in the Olympics. Where are we headed with this? Do you see any trends for like the next Olympics in two years, the Winter Olympics? Um, so I think we're going to start to see more highlight packages. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to be able to analyze stuff in real time. There's going to be more data um, that you know, that is going to be used from each one of the athletes. That that I think will be a part of that actual process. But I also think like even when I look at like, you know, like at the um, at the Google commercial, right, 
And so there was a commercial that they had for Google Genesis where they had this interaction between a, um, between a young fan um, and Cindy McLaughlin, like one of my favorite athletes, right? And so there was a lot of backlash. The backlash came from because it was a letter that was written by AI. And so, and so what we're going to start to see is we're going to take inherently human moments that are going to turn into digital transactions. And how are we going to feel about this? So today we might feel a certain way, but five years from now, when that becomes normalized, what does that look like? And so I think we're going to start to see more of those experiences throughout the Olympics. And I think, um, so now are we going to watch Olympics live? Or are we going to be watching more? Um, I'm just watching highlights, and I'm not. So it'll be interesting to see how we consume it based on the technology and how it changes our experiences. Yeah, it's changing so quick as well. All right, Hodge, thanks a lot for breaking down AI in the Olympics. Appreciate that. Yeah, hey, I appreciate This is my Snoop Dogg moment, so I'm excited to be here, and I want to thank you for this time. <laughs> Snoop, <laughs> Snoop is making a half a million a day. <laughs> I know, he's raising You guys are paying me half a million a day. No. Like, you know, I need to have Snoop's agent. Are we paying you half of anything? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I make the big bucks over here, but I'm not making what Snoop Dogg is making for sure. We're glad so. you dropped by, Hodge. Yeah. I'll try to improve that budget in the coming months.